piloted by Tord Reklev, the uh, Drampa GX Garboder deck. And we'll see how this matchup is going to go here. Uh, folks, if you're watching at home, get on social media. Use that hashtag play Pokemon. Tell us who you think is going to win. Will it be Frank Diaz or will it be Daniel Lynch? Uh, one of these players will advance to the second day of competition if they win this round. And this should be an exciting one. So the real big difference I'm seeing between these two players' decks, uh, Frank opting to use more of like a rainbow energy strategy for self-damaging his bench. While on uh, Daniel's side, we're seeing the Potown. Yeah, that okay. seems to be what both players are favoring here. Uh, Frank is coming with a very interesting list. He is running actually only two of the Trashalanche Garboder, really favoring that Garbotoxin which uh, I can understand. Garbotoxin is incredibly powerful, and it is part of what makes this deck so disruptive. Uh, also running a strange two Plumeria in his deck. That is not <laughs> a card we've seen at all this weekend. And not one, but two. Frank's running two. We've seen Team Flare grunt before, but Frank going with Plumeria. And I want to see if that actually has a big impact on this particular matchup where you are relying on Drampa GX. A Pokemon that takes multiple turns to power up, because that Berserk Attack takes three energy. You need one attachment and then a double colorless energy. Will that Plumeria make a difference here in momentum as Frank is able to discard energy from his opponent's Pokemon? Uh, that's one thing I'm going to be looking out for in this match. That's one card that on paper, it's weird. It looks too good, but not good enough at the same time. Being able to discard an energy both on your opponent's Pokemon and their bench is an incredible ability, uh, and that's something that Plumeria gives. But it comes at a high cost of discarding two cards from your hand. Now, other cards do that, like Ultra Ball, but Ultra Ball, you're usually getting a Pokemon that allows you to, you know, refill up your hand size after you've dropped it. Uh, with Plumeria, that's your supporter card for the turn. So it's a, it's a very big risk-reward card, but I've been interested to see how players will use it. Yeah, now Daniel also running the Drampa Garboder deck with the Trash Lanch and Garbotoxin Garboder. Um, running that Po Town, as we mentioned, that's been an interesting card from the Burning Shadows expansion. Um, as we do see Guzma here right off the bat, interesting play, going right after that Drampa GX wants to get the first hit in, maybe. Uh, but Po Town is great for two things activating your Berserk bonus damage and also chipping away at other evolutions, such as Gardevoir GX. Uh, Gardevoir GX is very difficult to knock out with 230 HP, but if you can ping it for three damage counters as it evolves, uh, 200 is a bit more manageable, and that's just something that players are bringing to this tournament. So there we see just a little Righteous Edge uh, over on Daniel's side, dropping two damage counters, yeah. and we're back over on Frank's side. Has, uh, has the floats toned down if you ever did want to activate the Garbotoxin, uh, it doesn't have the biggest effect in this matchup, but it can work if you get it uh, before your opponent can start dropping their Tapu Leles. Uh, otherwise, I think you're kind of entering this strange, like, trash avalanche war between the two players. And then Frank eyeing up that Plumeria, as we were just discussing. He could grab that with Wonder Tag, discard the Psychic Energy from his opponent's active Pokemon, and then Big Wheel GX to get a fresh hand of 10 cards. We could see Plumeria coming into play right away. Uh, in this particular situation, you have to think Team Flare Grunt would have just been better. You don't have to discard your cards, but uh, Plumeria will be the supporter of choice here and will set Daniel back a turn by discarding his energy. Yeah, you pay that high cost, I guess, uh, in return for the flexibility. It's tough, uh, but we'll see if it ends up paying off. It's a very bold card at the very least. <laughs> yes. And there it is, Plumeria. Discard two cards and discard one energy from your opponent's Pokemon. And he can even play a rainbow energy onto the bench to damage a Pokemon to activate Berserk's bonus damage for next turn. And I think we'll probably see the big wheel GX here. Give Frank 10 cards after he attaches a float stone as well. Free 10 cards too is incredible. Uh, no hand to shuffle back in. He's just getting 10. Yeah, there are many different kinds of GX attacks, some that do massive amounts of damage, some that shuffle cards back into your deck, get cards from your discard pile back into your hand, uh, divide damage all over your opponent's field. Big Wheel is just draw a bunch of cards. Yeah, and that's really good too. Yeah. Uh, I think the GX attack is my favorite 
mechanic that the Pokemon game has added in a long time. Uh, they've just done it in such a smart way where there's so many different ways that you can use them. They're not all just GX for 300 damage. Although <laughs> sometimes that's really good. Uh, it's the ones like this, Shuffle and Draw 10, Algorithm, a Hollow Hunt. Uh, they're all just uh, really, really interesting ways where you're doing crazy things that aren't really seen in other attacks, but you only get the one per game. Yeah, so Daniel using another wonder tag here with Tapu Lele GX. Uh, I can't imagine he saw Plumeria coming. That's just not a <laughs> card you see very often. Even Team Flare Grunt every once in a while, but that's not something you would expect to see. And now, how will he respond? I mean, you can't really commit energy to the active Drampa GX. If you do, just double colorless choice ban is a berserk knockout. So if you put an energy there, you're putting it at risk. Uh, if you put it on a bench Pokemon, <laughs> Frank could just play another Plumeria and then knock out your active. Uh, it's uh, very scary to think that your energy could go away. And uh, it, it seems to be making a huge difference in this matchup already. And we live in a versus seeker powered world where at any point, now that the Plumeria has been played, it could be revived at any, any time. I don't know if Frank has a double colorless energy in hand. Uh, but he did just draw 10 cards. Uh, it's actually, a, it's a pretty aggressive play. It was weird. Uh, Daniel got the first attack. Theoretically, on paper, that means he's going to get the first attack with Berserk as well. We'll get the double down. Uh, minus one energy can sort of swing that tempo. Indeed, especially when you have things that require multiple energy attachments to do their big attacks. Uh, Berserk is great, but it does take two turns to power up. And the reason this works so well is, you know, not much happens on the first turn, so you can play your energy. And then the second turn, you can attach the double colorless energy and then unleash the Berserk. And then from there, you have a Trash Avalanche, which only takes one energy. So it all kind of works out. But uh, when you get set back by that one energy, that one turn, it really messes with your momentum. So there we see uh, the big wheel did get uh, turned into a regular sized wheel, shuffled his hand in, gets a new six. Daniel has to pass no energy attachment. That is very bad. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually brutal. You sort of allow your opponent to even palm the Plumeria for a turn. <laughs> well, I'll just drop this next turn since you weren't even able to attach an energy on this one. That's tough. Uh, I don't see a double colorless energy on Frank's side, so he may not be able to berserk yet, but he has plenty of ways to draw cards if he wants to. He has that interesting conversation of, like, he has N in his hand. Do you play N if your opponent didn't even attach an energy? Or do you uh, try and play a different kind of supporter? Yeah, lots of different decisions for Frank to make here. He also has Shaman EX in his hand. Uh, we haven't actually seen Shaman EX used in a lot of these Garb Order decks, uh, recently at least, but Frank's still opting to play one. It does offer you a lot of reach and flexibility. Uh, Tapu Lele GX is great. It's a fantastic card. It has 170 HP. It's not easy to knock out. It finds you a supporter, has a good attack but it does not allow you to draw extra cards. Uh, that is something exclusive to Shaman EX for the most part, where uh, if you played your supporter already, Tapu Lele GX doesn't really help you at all, but if you Sycamore and didn't find what you needed, you can play a bunch of cards, play Shaman EX, and dig deeper later in the game. So we see an N, uh, just attached to the benched Pokemon, so trying to play a slower game. After all, your opponent didn't even attach an energy, so you can maybe afford to split the difference between these two Drampa, uh, start getting the game going long term. Have either of these players played item cards? Uh, Frank uh, has played a couple, I think okay. two or three at this point. Just wasn't sure. Uh, we haven't seen like a, a die tracker for them yeah. uh, on each side, but I don't think Trash Lance is getting too crazy on either side so far. No, certainly not. I think there might be enough to knock out a Trubbish at this point on Frank's side, but um, otherwise nothing super relevant. And we do see Choice Ban, so he can Righteous Edge for 50 here and set up the, the two-hit knockout with Berserk. And we'll see how Daniel responds here. He is under a decent amount of pressure. He has no energy in play. He uh, doesn't have enough item cards in Frank's discard pile to do a lot with the trash Lanch attack. And he is being threatened by multiple Drampa GX. Now they're just one energy attachment away from uh, unleashing Berserk. Yeah, it's going to be a slow game on both sides, I think. Uh, we're going to ramp up a lot of damage in a couple turns here. But for now, it's all about establishing 
how you're going to go from here and what you're going to do in the next couple turns. Do you even go for an acid spray maybe to try to discard Frank's energy? <laughs> you do it with Plumeria, I'll do it with acid spray. <laughs> um, that could be one way just to, in theory, prevent uh, your opponent from getting a Berserk out unless they do something with Guzma uh, yeah, to switch. It'd be incredibly annoying. Uh, discard the Psychic Energy. The Drampa has a Choice Bane on it, so you can't put a Float Stone on it to retreat. Could set Frank back a turn. Yeah, both these players are sort of, uh, neither of them having the explosive start that this deck can have, instead sort of both opting to play the long game. It's almost like who can out annoy the other player uh, to grab a victory? Yeah, I mean, when you're both playing Trash Lanch, you want to play as few items as possible, and that means the game goes very slowly. Uh, I find there's an interesting, like, breaking point where you're trying so hard, you're like, can't play items, can't play items, can't play items, and then one turn you're the just like... The floodgates open. Ugh, Sycamore, and then you're like, all right, I played 20 items. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, that, it doesn't matter at this point. I just need yeah. to play all of them. I've played 15 items. What's five more? Yeah. You, know, like, <laughs> you get to get to that point, and then your opponent's like, okay, well, uh, I need to match up with this. Here we go. <laughs> in the meantime, uh, we saw an end. It actually put a double colorless into Frank's hand. Uh, I don't think he had one before. Yeah, I, and I think this goes back to the style of Tord Reklev's uh, Drampa Garboder deck. I think he won a lot of matches just by being able to operate without item cards. He played four Top of Lele GX in his deck. Uh, he was able to set up just by playing supporter cards and hardly playing any item cards, and it gave him a big advantage in the mirror match in particular. The first person to blink is the one that kind of loses uh, the first oh one to play too many items. But here's a Here comes big... the acid spray with the choice band. Oh, Ooh. Tails. Uh, still <laughs> dealing a, a decent amount of chip damage, but uh, no spray today. <laughs> All right, now we'll see. This will force Frank to at least respond to the Trubbish. Uh, he'll have to play a double call us energy to knock it out with Berserk. He doesn't want to take too many of those acid sprays, but he seems to be in a pretty dominant position still. Uh, he has just a bunch of energy in play. He has damage on his bench for the Berserk. He can get the first knockout. Uh, it just seems like as long as Frank keeps drawing energy, he'll be able to attack until he wins. Yeah, uh, it's working so far, but if he's out of space to sort of like draw more cards or play more supporters, it could slow down quite a bit. I don't know if he had like other draw supporters in hand. He has Versus Seeker and Sycamore, actually. Those are pretty good options. But uh, so far, you can just see a big like energy difference between the two sides. Oh, all sparked by that first Plumeria and the fact that Frank went first in this game. Uh, he did play Ultra Ball. You know, you have to be careful how many items you're playing. Um, but uh, I guess Frank was just saying, all right, I think I can afford to play one item here, play Ultra Ball, make sure I get an evolution out now that I'm starting to take prize cards, uh, one of the big things is making sure you draw good cards as the game progresses. You don't want to get an end down to a low hand size. And I think another thing Frank is recognizing is this is the only Trubbish in play for Daniel. He's playing a bunch of item cards here, but it almost doesn't matter because there's no threat of Trash Lanch in the immediate future. And if Daniel just plays down a Trubbish, Frank can target it with Guzma or Lysander and knock it out. So. Uh, I think this is a very intelligent play, as we're accustomed to seeing from Frank Diaz. Uh, understanding the board state that, oh, my opponent just can't trash lanch me. Sure, I'll play my items. Yeah, and uh, Frank running, I would say, a high amount of Guzma. He's got three copies in his deck. Yep. Uh, that's giving him a better chance to sort of pick off the next Trubbish, uh, if Daniel is even able to get one. Uh, no energy on the board once again. We'll have to see how he responds could Righteous Edge and discard the double colorless, but it's uh, that's sort of like a slow uh, sort of back foot play. Yeah, I think that's almost what he has to do, though. Uh, you can't just let Frank's Drampa GX berserk over and over. You need to do some like Righteous Edge and end your opponent. Getting Trubbish down helps as well. But now Daniel is playing a couple item cards of his own, so this is where pressuring your opponent can force them to play item cards, which then unlocks your bigger damage output with trash a lanch it's uh it's it's kind of cool to see this garboder deck in action and it's easy to see why it has been so successful in tournament play 
Yeah, the end is only bringing Frank down to five. Despite all this game that we've seen so far, only one Trubbish has been knocked out. So you're not, even though you're losing by what feels like more than just one prize card, uh, it's not going to disrupt yet. All he can hope for is, I guess, uh, keeping Frank away from the double colorless energy. Yeah, Frank has been pretty fortunate in this game in terms of uh, drawing cards in kind of the correct order. He didn't have to discard too many items early on. And uh, he was able to Sycamore, draw a bunch of cards without really sacrificing uh, the item cards to, you know, pump up Daniel's trash lanch. And then uh, Daniel, on the other hand, has had some awkward hands where he's like, oh, I need to play N so I don't discard too many items with Sycamore. And he's been much slower as a result. But we'll see if Daniel can make a late game comeback now that he has two Trubbish down, get some big trash lanch attacks off. And will Frank draw double colorless energy this turn to follow up with another Berserk? If he doesn't, he could be in some trouble. Yeah, then you're in this weird situation where what do you do? You can't really move from the active spot unless you have some kind of like Guzma play to retreat. Uh, it's a rare situation where sometimes you could just Guzma because you needed to switch. Yep. But uh, I don't think I see a double colorless energy in his hand right now. Yeah, There's he does have psychic. Guzma. He can go for a Trubbish here. Uh, knock it out with perhaps just trash lanch, attach another energy to uh, the benched Trampa GX, and uh, you know take another prize, go down to four. That could be the best way for him to set up here. And I got to imagine that's what we're going to see. Guzma probably going for a trubbish. We'll see a trash lanch knockout, and he does still have those two Trampa GX nearly powered up, just needing double call this energy. Yeah, uh, he opts to attach to the bench Trubbish so that he has more trash lance that he can follow up with if he needs to. <laughs> Do you see his <laughs> hand? He's got three choice bands. <laughs> oh, man. And uh, Professor Sycamore. Yeah, you don't really need those right now. Off yep. <laughs> so there we see uh, another knockout, another Trubbish drops. Daniel back down to just one Trubbish in play. At this point, maybe seeing a uh, opportunity to take a knockout, any kind of knockout, uh, and I believe the trash battle has begun. Yeah, but again, Frank kind of has the lead in this battle. He has taken out two Trubbish at this point. Now Daniel's left with only one in play. Sure, he can respond and get a Trash Lanch knockout here. But then Frank, all he needs is double Colas onto the Drampa GX. He can knock out the third Trubbish and leave Daniel with really only one energy in play and no damage on any benched Pokemon besides the Drampa that has the damage on it that would need to attack because it's the one with the energy. It really is crazy to think that at this point in time, uh, we had already finished two matches, <laughs> in the, <laughs> two games in the last match. Here, uh, I think it's really going to come down to this first game uh, for a big portion of it. Uh, this is a big methodical matchup. You have to play slowly, like you said. Uh, if you go too quickly, you just open yourself up to a huge trash lance from your opponent. And I feel like we're finally sort of reaching a breaking point here where players are starting to knock out back and forth as quickly as they can. Yeah, there's certainly a slow buildup in this matchup where, you know, you just don't play items, don't play items. Uh, okay, I have to play items now, and now we're both doing 400 damage. Yeah, here we see you know, the rescue stretchers, ultra balls, um, just getting more trubbish down, sycamore, just... Uh, throwing caution to the wind. You need more cards at this point. And uh, Daniel's already back two prizes and back in energy attachments. He needs to do everything he can to just uh, slow Frank Diaz down and hope that for some reason he's not able to find an additional attacker energy. Yeah, I will say something Frank is very, very good at is thinning out his deck. I think he's one of the best at it. Uh, understanding how many resources he needs to win a game, uh, what he can throw away at what points, and uh, I think he's done an excellent job of that in this game so far. He has fewer cards in his deck than Daniel, I think, by a pretty significant margin. So when the game gets to a late stage and his opponent plays N, he'll have a higher probability of drawing useful cards. And I think he's going to go even deeper here. Uh, he has Professor Sycamore. He has a couple choice bands he can play out, but he'll draw seven extra cards here. And... Uh, I think he'll set himself up to be in a good spot as the game goes on. Yeah, 
trying to see. Uh, I'm trying to think like what Daniel's path is to turning the game around. Uh, it's very tough. You just are sort of banking on your opponent not having uh, resources, the even though they have a ton of outs to get them. Yeah, sure seems like Frank is the one in control of this game. <laughs> here come the bands. <laughs> the band's all here. And here's a big, we've talked about it very early in the game, but it's finally dropping down. That Shaman set up, refilling Frank's hand. Yeah, he was going for a double Colossus energy, but was unable to find it. There are two in the discard, and now he's going to look, uh, how many cards do I have left? Can I afford to play Professor Sycamore here? Yeah, I think he can, but it's certainly dangerous. Uh, the worst thing you can do is, in a winning game, fly too close to the sun and run out of cards. It feels horrible. It certainly does. Does he have even a rescue stretcher to get back? Trash a lanch, garb odor. Uh, we saw his second one was in his prize cards. Yeah, and he only runs the two. This is a situation where opting to only run the two two split could be difficult. Definitely. And it looks like I. Thankfully, uh, I think I just overheard the judges. They're going to help us out by having both players let us know what the item count is on both sides. I don't know how relevant it is now that pl both players have played a decent amount, but good to know. So we will see Frank probably play Professor Sycamore here, digging for that double colus energy or perhaps rescue stretcher. Either one would allow him to get a knockout on this turn. Well, there's the double. And no stretcher. So it uh, looks like we're going to be coming up with Drampa for a knockout here. And I'm wondering how Daniel can respond against that. Yeah, there are eight items in Frank's discard, so a field blower would be an easy knockout. Uh, even a choice band plus trash a lanch would be a knockout. Uh, that's really the only option here. Drampa GX can't really do enough uh, unless Daniel has the Potown combo with the choice ban on the Drampa GX Berserk for exactly 180 damage, but you gotta think Trash Lange is the way to go here. Yeah, uh, only one energy on that benched uh, Drampa. You only need to attach one energy to Trash Lange. I did see the band in his hand, uh, so that's one piece of the puzzle. And he's really reluctantly throwing that <laughs> Trubbish up, but I think it's what you gotta do. Maybe just uh, doesn't have the immediate way to evolve. But there we see Ultra Ball. And uh, right now, uh, an ability lock is in play. Garbotoxin was actually uh, dropped over on Frank's side. So cards like Tapu Lele are not as good right now. Yeah, I think Daniel is just trying to figure out what are his odds of finding a psychic energy. He does not currently have one in his hand. And if he were to not draw psychic energy this turn, I think it would almost be game over. His last Garb Order would get knocked out. Frank's Trampa GX would be at full HP. Um, so I think this could be a big turn in this game. Daniel's going to play N and hope to draw a Psychic Energy to get a knockout. And if he can do that, he might disrupt Frank enough where he can just continue to use Trash Lanch and make a comeback in this game. Since Frank doesn't have any great attackers to follow this up, he has the Trampa GX with one energy on the bench but there's no other Pokemon on his bench that have damage counters on them, so he can't even Berserk for the full 150. He would need to find his Rescue Stretcher to trash a Lanch in response. So I think this is a big moment for Daniel. Off his five cards, does he find the Psychic Energy? Yeah, we've uh, seen Crucial Energy whips turning an entire matchup around already. Let's see if he gets it. I don't see it. I see doubles, I see double doubles, but I don't <laughs> see any psychic energy. <laughs> Was that a clenched fist? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Daniel understands that's it. That was the game. Uh, I, I think right, it really Frank might have just one. come down to that. If Daniel hits the energy, he might just be in a dominant position and take it, but Frank Diaz is on the right side of this exchange, and he takes game number one. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely crucial, just not being able to... Either one, he had to find a way to get damage on his bench so that he could attack with the Drampa. But since he opted, you saw how he was so scared to throw the Trubbish up. Uh, had the evolution, had the band, no Psychic. It seems like the easiest piece of the puzzle, probably had the most copies of it left in his deck, just wasn't able to hit it off an end of five. And sometimes you take that risk and you have to do it, but drawing your energy is not guaranteed. And that's what we saw right there. The difference between a potential win and a loss and now we have about 25 minutes left in this final round. The winner 
moves on to the second day of competition here at the World Championships. The loser will go home, and if there's a tie, both players will be sad because neither of them will advance. But uh, that clock is something we need to keep an eye on if game two completes and Daniel wins. We could be looking at an ugly tie here, but uh, we'll see. We're going to hope for a conclusion, a clear winner here. I, either way, always want a conclusion. That was a, a true roller coaster of a game. <laughs> I uh, There were so many situations at first, like, like Frank, you know, his big plumeri, I got all this energy. You're like, oh, well, clearly he's in the lead. And then for a brief window there, if Daniel hits the psychic energy, I think he's like the clear aggressor all of a sudden, uh, just because Frank and his prized Garbodor uh, was not able to get those attackers ready. And, and you uh, can see the 2-2 two -two split really mm -hmm. coming to bite him there. Or if he had just run the typical three trash lanch, one Garbo toxin split, it would have been probably an easy game for him. I'm just so used to just going but, and doing uh, it without thinking. I hear you. Ended up making you. things more interesting, to be sure. But we're here in game number two here in the final round of day number one at the 2017 Pokemon TCG World Championships. Let us know. Use the hashtag play Pokemon. Who do you think's going to win? Will Frank Diaz close it out and move on to the second day of competition? He is a former top four finisher at the World Championships. He's played in a lot of these. Or will Daniel Lynch make the comeback and punch his ticket to day number two? Well, if there's ever a card I want to start with uh, to begin a comeback game, it's Bridget straight in hand. Yep. Uh, it's not often that you get it that way where you don't have to lay lay for it first, but it sure is sweet when you do get it that way. Yeah, that's the perfect start. Bridget for three basic Pokemon, attach your energy, pass. That's all you want. So passing it back over to Frank. Doesn't, uh, I'm sure he wants to get some Trubbish down as soon as possible. I'm trying to see, does he have a Draw Supporter in hand? I see Plumeria, I see Floatstone, some Energies. Uh, I don't even know if that's Plumeria, that might be Oh, it's Guzma, Guzma. you're right. Yeah. Wrong Team Skull partner, <laughs> but uh, uh, just about as unhelpful right now. Yeah, uh, he's just gonna have to big wheel. He's got nothing else. Yeah, and that's sort of the beauty of big wheel is uh, like, Trampa was already an incredibly aggressive and strong card, but it can also save you in games, too. Yeah, uh, that was bad for Frank for a couple reasons. I mean, first of all, he didn't play a supporter. Yeah. Uh, he didn't get Trubbish into play. But the other thing is he had to play a double colorless energy on his active to use big wheels. So now Daniel could simply find a float stone retreat and use Righteous Edge to discard that double colorless energy, effectively setting Frank back a turn. Yeah, and that's uh, one thing in the mirror that can be really tough is if you're the first one to attach the double, uh, Righteous Edge just immediately bops your energy, puts you back some damage, and it can be really tough to uh, to come back. Discarding energy seems to be a big common thread we've seen uh, in the early Drampa Wars. That said, I don't know if I see the Floatstone on Daniel's side. That could be a big miss yeah, if he doesn't. I don't know if I see a Flumstone or Energy. Oh, even worse. <laughs> yeah. Missing Energy seems to be a pretty common thread for him so far. Uh, and that's a really tough time to have that be a, uh, a recurring thing for you. Absolutely. This is where having something like Shaman EX in your deck would make a big difference. Being able to set up and draw additional cards just to find that energy attachment for the turn. Uh, it is certainly a liability as the game progresses. Only 110 HP, but uh, in this situation, I think he would have welcomed it. So here we see the Po Town. So uh, when you evolve, you get three damage counters in your Pokemon. That powers up, you know, the attack from the Drampa, but with no energy over the course of that entire turn, uh, Frank's in a pretty good spot again. He do I don't know if he'll actually be able to do the full damage Berserk, but even doing something like knocking out a Trubbish can be big. Yeah, another awkward thing is he put Floatstone on the active, so he can't even choice ban 180 Berserk. Uh, he can only do 150 damage. I mean, he could do some weird uh, field blower, my own Floatstone, so I can play a choice ban. The pro play. Yeah, but uh, he's just in an awkward spot. And Frank's version without any sort of stadium card to get a, additional damage on your bench Pokemon is uh, a little bit slower. You try to attack on turn three most of the time with Trampa GX, kind of what we saw with Tord's deck at the International Championships. So I don't even know if Frank wants to do a Berserk to get a knockout here. He might just want to attach to a bench Pokemon and 
maybe try to find that rainbow energy to get some damage on his Trubbish. bench. Yes, yeah, so there was the uh, Ultra Ball getting one of his Trubbish down. Ops to grab, I think it was the Plumeria this time, uh, off of Wonder Tag. I wonder if he'll play it this turn just to try and get back to that uh, energy lead that helped him at the beginning of the last game. Sure, why not? Uh, play Plumeria. You can even uh, Shaman EX <laughs> set up for six cards after that. That's yeah. a good combo. It's it's like the Ultra Ball, except with a supporter. <laughs> it's a very strange combination, but why not? It works. Uh, Frank gets a lot of energy. He only runs two Rainbow in the entire deck, uh, so doesn't often uh, get that bench damage as uh, as quickly, but you can tell he's playing like a slower, more conservative list. Yeah, and you know, he can use Daniel's uh, Potown as well damage his own Garbodor when it evolves, and then activate Berserk that way. So he will take the first knockout here, and you saw why Plumeria is better in some situations than Team Flare Grunt. Uh, Team Flare Grunt can only discard energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Plumeria can discard them from anywhere. So with that versatility, even though Frank had to discard two cards, he set Daniel back a crucial turn, and once again will be kind of the aggressor in this matchup. So here, Daniel, he's sort of in that righteous edge zone where he can bring the energy way back down on Frank's side. Uh, that can definitely be a big deal. But he's back on the energy attachments. I was eyeing up to see if there's any possibility we see the crazy self-field blower, choice band nonsense. Uh, in the meantime, we're just going to see the righteous edge over on Daniel's side, which is why uh, Drampa versus Drampa is such a weird matchup. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can Righteous Edge to discard the other's energy. You can, it does exactly enough damage to knock out an opposing Drampa GX. It's uh, it's an interesting matchup when those two Pokemon fight each other. And then you have, of course, Trash Lanch waiting in the wings to fight the other Garbodor. Uh, this is certainly an interesting mirror match. You know, some mirror matches are very straightforward and don't require a lot of thought. It's just my big attacker blows up your big attacker first and you just trade blows back and forth but uh, this one is a little more a little more intricate where you have to be careful with your resources uh, the order you do things matters a lot uh, it's one of the most interesting mirror matches we have I think yeah and, uh, when players were first sort of uh, starting to realize this Garbodor deck was so good one of the big things I heard from players is like wow the mirror is really frustrating there are a lot of small things that you can do to throw the entire game away uh, there we see Choice Band just down on the bench, Trubbish. I'm in your hand. Yeah, Frank's Six. just deciding which supporter he wants to play here. He also opted to play the Double Colorless Energy on the bench, Trampa GX. Uh, but no real point to attaching it to the active when you can't really get a knockout. You have no damage on your bench Pokemon yet. You have the Float Stone, so you can't play the Choice Band. He's going to force his opponent to have a Guzma or Lysander to bring out his bench Drampa GX and knock the energy off of that one. So here we go. Uh, Frank getting five cards, Daniel getting six. And let's see uh, how he ends up playing from here. Well, not a whole lot to work with. Uh, I don't think he can really even play any of his cards. He could play Ultra Ball and grab a Garboder here, but I think he'll probably just use Righteous Edge. Yeah, just to put two damage counters down. Yep. Tiny little Righteous Edge, uh, no discards either way. And Daniel says, okay, my turn. Uh, I'm going to be doing the Berserk first. Yeah, he's going to get the first two prize knockout in this matchup, but he will give Frank an opportunity to respond with his own Berserk on the next turn. So it's still anyone's game. This is just the early stages of this second game. We just see the knockout. No additional cards being discard. played on Daniel's side. So will Frank be able to respond with a knockout of his own? He just needs an energy and an evolution so he can uh, put some damage counters thanks to that Potown. Yeah, uh, both players checking out uh, each other's discards. Still not a ton of item cards played on either side. That's a pretty crucial aspect of this mirror. He has Ultra Ball, so if he wants to go ahead and grab the Garboder, he's going to have to place some more items down. Uh, but he does have the energy Ultra too, ball. so you probably want to respond with a knockout. It just uh, it can be a pretty dangerous back and forth. Ultra Ball will put two more item cards in the discard pile. So now Frank up to five. That means the Trash Alanche attack on Daniel's side will be doing a pretty significant amount of damage, but not enough to knock out Drampa GX just yet. Um, 
We do see Garboder coming out. Frank's going to utilize uh, his opponent's Poe Town. <laughs> it's the exact same archetype, so why not? Uh, it's kind of nice. I don't even think Frank plays a Poe Town of his own, so he could just use his opponents. Yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, that's part of the game. You can use your opponent's cards sometimes. That's what stadium cards are all about. They affect both sides. So there we see uh, an end to cap it off. So he has everything to get the knockout right here. And then uh, Daniel, uh, this is a common thread for him. He's not going to have any energy on board. So <laughs> he's going to have to slowly build up once again. You can sort of two-shot with Garboder, but it can uh, it can be kind of a problem when your opponent can just knock you out in one hit and keep attaching energy. Yeah, Frank seems to be in the lead once again. He'll take a prize lead here, getting the knockout. Uh, he'll have more energy in play than his opponent. And not enough item cards in the discard pile to be affected by Trash and Lanch. Maybe with, you know, Daniel had double field blower in a choice band, he could get a one-hit knockout. That seems to work out, but I think we're more likely to just see a Righteous Edge and perhaps an N from Daniel and try to disrupt his opponent. If he doesn't have the N here, though, that could get ugly real fast. Frank's got a lot of cards in hand. Yeah, uh, just banking on the fact that your opponent can't find another double color synergy is tough. He has run through, I think it's just two, uh, would have two more left in deck, but he's also uh, gone pretty deep into the deck too. That's what we're gonna see though, just choice ban, Righteous Edge. Daniel Lynch, uh, he started the Berserk War, but is he going to be the one that finishes it? <laughs> so far it does not look like it, but it looks like Frank missed on his double colorless energy here. We'll have to see how deep he wants to go. Uh, he could versus Seeker for Professor Sycamore. And then if he draws it, he can take the knockout, go down to one prize card, uh, maybe put himself in a game-winning position. His other option is to play Guzma, bring out his opponent's Garboder, and use trash Lanch to knock it out, go down to two prize cards, which is a much more friendly number, I think, uh, when you keep in mind that N exists in the format to disrupt your hand. Yeah, uh, that also you know, just sort of preserves your Drampa, or theoretically preserves it for the turn. And it looks like what Frank is going to do. Trash a Lanch here, go down to two prizes. Theoretically, use a double color of synergy to seal the game. Yeah, and this is even awkward because it takes away Daniel's damaged bench Pokemon. So now if he wants to even knock out this active Pokemon, he needs double color synergy plus another evolution. Daniel's hand is actually looking pretty bad, too. I don't know oh, if yeah. he has... Yeah. <laughs> he, did, he didn't do anything last turn. <laughs> yeah, I, he's pretty much in top deck mode now completely. Uh, essentially, yeah. And this is not a good spot to be in when you're one win away from advancing to the second day of the World Championships. Things have not been going Daniel Lynch's way in this series against Frank Diaz, but Frank can taste it. He is so close to advancing to day number two. Just finishing off this match will do it. Well, Sycamore certainly helps uh, on Daniel's side. That's a great top deck when you have nothing, but it's uh, still a weird spot for him. Indeed, he's, he's also he's still a field blower. He also still has to take four prize cards, which is extremely relevant. Uh, he can take a knockout here, but that means he still needs to take two more after it if he gets a GX in the process, whereas Frank only has to knock out that Drampa GX and it's game over. Yeah, he's, uh, the clock is not favoring him. Uh, not the actual clock is ticking. We have 11 minutes. We're going to finish this game easy. Uh, but just more the clock of the game. How many turns he needs to recover on. We see uh, Garboder coming down on the bench. Uh, Daniel missed Psychic Energy again. Oh, no. The <laughs> same as game number one. More double doubles. Yeah, and this might be it. Frank Diaz has Guzma in hand. Can he do enough damage? Did he find the double colorless energy to knock out his opponent's Drampa GX? I don't know if I see it yet. Uh, I don't think the card he picked up from the I prize mean, is as big. Yeah. But he has so many options he could do now. Does he Plumeria and just try and keep his opponent low on energy? Uh, I think he has a single Psychic Enhanced. You could just simply attach it to your uh, your bench Drampa. Uh, maybe he doesn't actually have an energy. No energy, but he does have Plumeria or Guzma or Professor Sycamore. He has plenty of options to pick from. Uh, I don't mind the Plumeria here, discarding the double colorless energy and then simply taking the knockout. Uh, it allows you to discard extra cards that might be bad if your opponent plays N. Uh, so we're going to see Plumeria. He's going to discard certainly Trubbish, I would think, and then maybe Guzma as well. Uh, yeah, he has a Versus Seekers, so you could just pick it back up that way. 
Uh, he runs several copies of Guzma, uh, as we've seen. So yeah, keeping double versus Seeker and Tapu Lele GX in hand. All things that can give him a win on the following turn. So Frank, going down to one prize card. This could be it. He's showing once again the importance of Plumeria, discarding an energy off of the bench. Something that only Plumeria can do. And we're back over to Daniel's side. What do you even do? You're so far back. You can end your opponent down to one and hope that they don't draw into something, but uh, you're going to have to start getting knockouts as soon as possible. Any knockout now gives the game to Frank. And Daniel actually drew the double colas energy, but now his Trubbish is in the active spot. And I mean, do you play Guzma and hope your opponent doesn't have a Guzma of his own? I don't think so. Your opponent ultra balled away at Guzma. You have to expect that he has one, but that's the play he's taking. That's so dangerous. And as we know, that means it's over. Flash is the versus seeker. Guzma returns. And once again, I, the first of many that I think we're going to see, Guzma closes a tournament day. Yep. Your boy takes Frank Diaz into the second day of the World Championships. So this veteran player, Frank Diaz, is now in the mix to continue the competition here at the World Championships. Um, I'm sure any competitors playing tomorrow, if they're watching, just saw two top class competitors.